Hello and welcome to coverage of Grand Prix Albuquerque. Marshall Sycliff in the booth with Randy Bueller. We're in the quarterfinals, Randy. We have reached this long road and we're already underway here. Sam Pardee, he has a tie binder mage from his mono blue deck. He's playing against Paul Rietzel with mono black. Yeah, this is a pretty close matchup. I heard uh, I heard Sam talking about it coming into the top eight. Mm -hmm. I mean, both of these players have played this matchup plenty of times. Mm -hmm. These are clearly two of the fixtures in this standard metagame. Sam describes it as like, I have a bunch of really crappy creatures. I have like mm -hmm. one mana one ones, two mana two twos, mm -hmm. but he has to kill all of them. Okay. Like one card at a time. Right. And my creatures start at one mana and his removal starts at two mana. Okay. So he's like, if I just every turn play one of these creatures and he every turn kills one, you know, Sam's a little more mana efficient. His stuff's cheaper. Mm -hmm. So he should always have like one leftover guy. Okay. Or like maybe Thassa gets to attack every other turn or so. Mm -hmm. That's kind of how this matchup plays out. All right. You know, speaking of Thassa. Speaking of Thassa. Yeah, we see. And Mutavault. So he's kind of got three threats. And Paul hasn't answered any of them yet. That's that's right, mm -hmm. so not too bad here, but Devour a Devour Flesh, Flesh yeah, is going to take down Tidebinder Mages. Kind of two mana for here. two mana, so an even trade on mana, but Sam got in a, got in one hit. It interestingly does set back Thassa quite a bit here. Definitely. No other blue mana symbols on the board, and here it is though. There three, not Night only Vale three, Spectre. yeah, Night Vale Spectre, three blue mana or three black mana symbols for Paul Rietzel, but more importantly, can start grinding here. Block, block the Mutavault, attack over. Yep. I mean, Thassa may not be live, but her scry ability is pretty good in this matchup. Yes. You know, once Sam gets the lands that he wants, you know, 5-6, maybe he'll go to 7 if he draws one of his Cyclonic Rifts. Um, mm -hmm. He just lands get bad pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. All right, so Night Veil vale Spectre meets another Night Veil vale Spectre, but this one's very important for Sam Pardee as uh, that represents four blue mana symbols now on the battlefield. Yeah. So he's any permanent, basically, in his deck. That's not a land away from having Thassa got well, into the we'll sea. We'll see. Active. The big difference between those two Night Vale Spectres mm -hmm. is that one of their owners plays removal spells. <laughs> yes, you are other, correct. The other one doesn't. That is correct. Uh -huh. Now, so, Night Vale yeah. Spectre's pretty adept at dodging a lot of forms of removal. It's true. Uh, here's the second one for Paul Rietzel, but yep. Paul does run Heroes Downfall in the deck, which takes, takes yeah, care of it quite downfall. nicely. Yep. Yeah, he can also, I mean, maybe time to devour flesh. I guess to time it right. All right, here's often, four mana. Often for they Sam wind up eating us. Oh. Biden the Thassa is going to make Thassa herself active, and he's just going to send it in there. No good response here for Paul Reedsley. He either mm -mm. takes five and gives up a card, or chumps or, with Spectre, or chumps which. with one of his better creatures. Probably takes five. Yeah, Paul's game plan is to kill all of Sam's creatures. We talked about how you know yeah. Sam doesn't expect to be able to attack with Thassa all the time, but Biden is. Those devotion encounters are going to stick around. Mm -hmm. And he even has judges familiar. Judges familiar as a follow-up. You know, player. one mana he's able to go two different threats, right? Biden yep. plus yep. judges familiar. Right now, what does Paul have? I see desecration demons in his hands. Yeah, that is not great on this board. No, he's got two of them. He has two pack rats hmm. and something. Does something kill Night Vale Spectre? Because that's Don't what he needs know to what do. That last even goes. killing the Night Vale Spectre though is still four devotion, right? It is still at four. So again, any permanent. Sam Pardee also has two Muta Vaults there, which can act to keep a Desecration Demon locked down if they want. They can also just yeah. attack. Paul goes for the Demons. Yeah, so no attacking from those. They're just going to act as fodder, it looks like. Sam deciding what to do with the card on top of his library. We're in his upkeep. Paul Rietzel's at 13. At what point I mean does Sam Pardee just start making stuff unblockable and just Soon. getting him? Yeah. Soon. I mean, he could Maybe put him now. on a two-turn clock here. He could make his Night Vale Spectre and his Thassa unblockable, hit him for seven. Yeah, this game is uh, this is how Sam wants the game to go. Yeah. He's just dumping his hand. Biden's letting him refill and keep going. I mean, Paul, the way the matchup plays out, the late game favors Paul. Sam's the beatdown. Paul's the control. Right. Paul, though, I mean, he doesn't have any card advantage flowing right now. No. He hasn't had enough removal to keep Thassa dormant. Unblockable, yeah, unblockable, unblockable. unblockable. Hit you for seven. Now, Demon seven, Trigger has to go on the three, stack. Sam's obviously not going to sack anything. Wow, so these are just huge. He gets a draw two well, straight up. Yeah. And, and he's also going to get card. Night Veil Spectre as well. Underworld Connection's not going to do much, but... Are the judges familiar? Maybe a Raptor? 
it's a raptor. So that's food. More devotion, more devotion insurance. Potentially, too. yeah, yeah, devotion insurance as well, which is really I mean, critical here, right? Because he Paul needs. wants to attack with demon, let him. Yeah, of course. What do you care? Take six. I don't have to sack somebody to get that blocker out of the way. Of course. Yeah. yeah. This, uh, <laughs> this is uh, this is looking heavily favored for Samus. Even He's been if able Paul to kill Spectre at this point. Thos is still active. Mm -hmm. Paul has to kill two creatures. That's not happening. He has to play a Grey Merchant, I guess, but he doesn't have. He doesn't even have a fifth land. No, he doesn't. We're going to see some sort of like Desperation Nightfield Spectre attack here. He's hoping for like Psychonic Rift and or land. Yeah, you're right. He's yeah, going to attack is, with both of this them. This is the Desperation. None of the cards in my hand help. Before How blockers, about the cards on top of your library? A, yeah, he's got an ultimate price here. Is he pointing that at the Cloudfin Raptor to clear a path? Probably. Oh, there's a response, though. Rapid hybridization. Okay. It turns it into a 3-3. Three, three. Oh, yeah. Uh, your rapid hybridization resolves. All right, he's going to aim it <coughs> at Thassa, so he's going to make sure to get a lizard token here. Sure. I like it. We that think this is mid-combat, clearing a path for the specters, basically. That's right. <laughs> but yeah, I think these are desperation top decks. <laughs> Frostborn Weird and Master of Waves. Those aren't lands. <laughs> or bounce spells. Or, or bounce anything. spells or anything. Go. Right. I got you. Cyclonic Rift potentially could help. But Sam Party actually has lethal on the table here. Yeah, no, Paul's just going through the motions here. Yep. Seeing if he can learn anything else about how his opponent plays well, that can help him in game two. Yeah, he just learned one thing, and there's another judge's familiar. Again, okay. this is just insurance plan, it's also free. Right. He does see, mm -hmm. yeah, a couple more cards. These, I don't think they have deck lists. Mm -hmm. True. You know, that's a good question. They usually they do, do they get do them. Have deck lists? They do okay. usually get them. All right. Well, there's yep. the game. And that's it. Sam Party takes game one yeah, over Paul Reed. One zero. It was. And, and, you know, you've been mentioning this all weekend, Randy, that this is very much a, a pretty classic beatdown versus control type matchup. Right. And, uh, I mean, Sam, and Sam Party is a beatdown. He's not blisteringly fast. Not right? at We're all. not talking, you know, Naya Blitz or, no. you know, this Burning Tree Emissary is chaining. But, I mean, he's going to keep playing creatures and he's going to keep attacking yep. with them. Mm -hmm. And he's hoping he can get his opponent from 20 down to zero. I that's mean, that, right. That's a beatdown strategy. That is a beat. Right? He, he's it's in almost that like, role. I guess I think I heard him compare it to the Aristocrats deck from the last standard. Uh -huh. Like, your creatures are, they're not awesome, caught sort of power to cost ratio wise mm -hmm. but they're surprisingly resilient and you just keep attacking with them and th hopefully your opponent falls over all right so this is where we we've reached a, the point of the top eight where the opponents stare at their opponent's deck list for a while and then they have to figure out how to sideboard. and then figure out how to sideboard so let's take a look at the boards here what is paul Rietzel going to bring in freakish cure probably comes in in this matchup you can one for one most of sam's small creatures and even master of waves with it yeah, i mean maybe does he want Dark Betrayal to hit the Nightfell Spectre? That Nightfell Spectre, is a good question. It only hits Nightfell Spectre, but Nightfell Spectre is incredibly important. Mm -hmm. Doomblade comes in, I would think. Yeah, and it's important on multiple fronts, right? I mean, it's the, the best way that Sam Pardee has to get Thassa God of the Sea active. And it also just generates advantage on its own. Yeah, it's... Uh, I, I don't know what Paul's take is on Thoughtseize in this matchup. I know that... You know, a lot of the guys playing this mono black deck, one of the reasons they're playing it is they think Thoughtseize just might be the best card in standard right now. Mm -hmm. You know, Thoughtseize, whatever your opponent's up to, I can just neuter it. But the way this blue deck works, I know Sam Black was really articulate, uh, articulate on this point in, a, in an article a couple of weeks ago. He doesn't care if his opponent Thoughtseize is him. Mm. Like, he's playing a beatdown strategy. He's just trying to get threats onto the table as efficiently as he can mm -hmm. and attack you. So if you're spending a mana and two life and a card and you're not affecting the board, mm -hmm. okay. Sure. Go ahead. Knock yourself out. Yep. Thoughtseize me. I don't care. Which, again, is something that you would hear from somebody playing the aggressive role. Right, yeah. right, right. So I don't know where Paul, how Paul thinks about Thoughtseize in this matchup, but, I mean, that's, those are the kind of things he's got to be thinking. Like, I would think more removal comes into the deck. Like, he's playing an opponent. His opponent has a bunch of creatures. He needs to keep Thassa dormant. He needs to make sure that he can kill Nightfell Spectre, make sure that he can kill uh, Master of Waves. So mm -hmm. more removal's coming in. I would... I'm not, I don't like Thoughtseize in this matchup. Like, Sam's point makes total sense to me here. Like, if the Mono Blue guy is happy to be Thoughtseized, then he's, he's got to be the best Mono Blue Devotion player at this point, right? Yeah. I mean, the four straight top eights. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm taking out my Thoughtseizes. I don't care what I think about them. If, <laughs> if Sam doesn't care, put him in the sideboard. Give me some more removal spells. All right, let's take a look at Sam's side of the table. He's got four gains, say. Could hit Night Veil Spectre, but still not worth it, right? Nah. Okay, nothing like that. So he's no, got he, he needs to, He needs to remember his role. This is another one of these cases where the blue deck has to be careful not to just dilute its strategy. Like, I think 
he can't get out of the beatdown role. I mean, against a blue deck, you can make this blue this deck controllish against the Esper or something. You can mm -hmm. have a bunch of gain saves. You can try to play that game. Yeah. But not against the black deck. Right. Like you can't really answer their long term threats. You can't answer uh, underworld connections. You know, the one negate. Like maybe. Biden is an interesting one here because if he manages to stick some of those darky creatures, like if any of them survive removal, mm -hmm. then those Biden hits are just precious gold. Every extra oh, card that he every draws one of them. is spectacular for him. That is interesting from Paul's side too. If he keeps his thought seizes in, that's one of the few ways he can actually get a Biden. But if he boards in all removal and doesn't care about the thought right, seizes, he can just say, the you can yeah, blank the Biden if you yes, kill all the creatures. That's right. So interesting uh, dynamic there. Now a quick update from BDM. Mm. Todd Anderson. Yeah? Up a game. Up a game. Over Andrew Trying Hansen. to get to Valencia, trying to knock that Naya deck out before we can get it on camera. That's right. And uh, Owen Turtonwall. It's in the cursed B seat. <laughs> we never get to see the B table. It is t this weekend. It's too bad. We should have put Naya yeah. on the other table. It would be really inconvenient to get it on camera. Because then we would guarantee yeah, it. Yes. Exactly. Uh, Owen Turtonwald. Up yeah? one game to zero over Joseph Nix as All right. well in the mirror. So. Any word on the Sam Black match yet? Not yet. Okay. That one's the uh, the mono blue mirror against Valentin Mackle. So the other uh, the other card in Sam's sideboard mm -hmm. that seems relevant to me is domestication. Yeah, I think you st you want to steal Night Vale Spectre. Yes, like stealing a Night Vale Spectre sounds awesome. I mean that gives you five devotion. <laughs> yeah, that does, that's not bad. Yeah, that, yeah, that is not bad. And, and also it takes a Night Vale Spectre. Right? Yeah, it's two for one. It's inherently a two for one all by itself. So. That's right. Yeah, I think the domestication comes in. He's got one in the main. Like about the. I mean, Sam's list looks very similar to the one Sam Black has had so much success with. He's uh -huh. off by like. Sam has a domestication instead of a second Jace in the main, mm -hmm. and then I think there. The only other difference is like one. Uh, Sam has two Cyclonic Rifts. This Sam. Right. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Pardee has uh, two Rapid Hybridization, one Cyclonic Rift, and Black is the other way around. Okay. So, I mean, they're super close. Very I'm similar. Uh, looks like Paul Rietzel's on a mulligan here. He's on looks the like play a on a mulligan. Now, we know that his deck contains many ways to recover from, from mulligans, but the question is, is he alive? Right, he has to survive. <laughs> like, he has to go trade one for one, one for one, one for one to get to yeah. one of those. Oh, Mackle is up 1-0. Wow, that's in the mirror match against, I mean, you just said it. Against Sam Gotta Mark. be considered the best... Mono Blue Devotion player going right now. Sam Black and, and Fastest Mackle. chosen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. That's not a card yet. I, that's not. I like that, though. Fastest chosen. Come out in the next set with a picture of Sam Black on it. I, I'd have him sign one for me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's see if uh, Paul Riesel can keep a six here. He's down a game. Certainly don't want to go to five. And here's one of the Paul Reed's one-landers, but it doesn't have thought seizes. Yeah. And no, he's going to have to one. ship that one back. Wow. That's so bad. That is too bad. So Paul Reed's going down to five on the play, down a game in the quarterfinals. Yeah, it's, and Sam is just trying to keep his, trying to keep calm, thinking about that trip to Valencia. Yeah. He wants it. <laughs> He's so close right now. Yeah, and Sam, you know, Sam Pardee's in a, he, he's a Grand Prix champion, this guy. I mean, this yeah. is this is not new territory for him at all. So he's he's going to be all business here. You know, I think that sometimes when you see people top eight their first GP, they get uh, sort of this almost like relieved, giddy kind of like, hey, mm -hmm. I top eight it. I'm going to go yeah, home. Sometimes. I'm going to go tell all my friends that I top eight it. And they're and, done, right? And they're, they're just happy to be there. And they're kind of checked out. Sam's not that guy. He's yeah, absolutely in battle mode. You have to, block it out. You you have really to just do. think about the game, think about the matchup, think about your hand, what yes. you're, how you're hoping the game's going to play out. You just have to not think about that stuff. Yeah, and sometimes that takes practice, you know? I mean, sometimes some people are different from me. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it was easier the first time. Is that right? Yeah, the first time I was able to just think about nothing but the games, uh -huh. but then, like, the expectations having... I mean, my first major top eight was a Pro Tour. I won the Pro Tour, right. so there's so many more expectations to get that second top eight ah. that I had, uh, I had more trouble blocking it out. Interesting. Okay. The second we're, trips. Yeah, yeah, we're underway here. Paul Rietzel thought seizing his opponent, so taking another virtual mulligan here. He's going to see Mutavault Island, Judge's Familiar. Uh, that is a rapid hybridization, a Frostburn Weird, a Cloudfin Raptor, and a Night Veil vale Spectre. So a pretty decent hand here for Party, though he's quite a, quite a bit off from being able to cast, like, the Spectre. He's another right. blue source from being able to cast his Frostburn weird, but right. uh, he's only running, I mean, however many Muta Vaults between two to four, I'm assuming four, yeah, and then the rest good. are islands, so. 
Yeah, he's on one Nykthos for Muta Ball. Okay. Which is the same way Sam Black builds it. Okay. So this is a huge one for Paul. He needs to make sure that he keeps the pressure off of himself. I yeah, mean, he, al he also may be thinking that like the only way he wins this game is if he gets lucky. Yes. So he may be thinking, all right, I have to assume Party's not going to draw the lands to ever cast, say, Night Vale Spectre. Right. So that would lead him to, to one of the one-drops like, here. That I'd cert I mean, I haven't gotten a good look at Paul's hand. I see a Nightfall Spectre. I do can't see tell that what the as others well. are. I, I don't can't even know if either. he has more land. Rapid but He took like ripe, rapid hybridization. Um, interesting. Yeah, almost it's a one-mana spell that could, you know, turn off Paul's Nightfall Spectre. Yes, but that's yeah, Paul, right. But yeah, Paul sort of gets to assume that his opponent is going to draw badly and that Paul's going to draw well. Because yes. those are the only games he cares about. That's like, right. How do I maximize my chances of winning? And, you know, the games where Sam, where Sam draws reasonably, Paul's not winning. All right, so this thing goes, and it looks like there's a Devour Flesh. Yeah. No, it's oh, a Freak is Cure. Okay. And it does actually resolve here as well. He's going to keep Judges Familiar on the battlefield. And that is a Temple of Deceit, so He's that's not the land too bad. Yeah, and, and he can dig for more lands doing this. Right, now doesn't if, find uh, one. does Sam draw the islands he needs? No. Wow. Second He's got, he drew, drew a second Mutavault, and he's just right. forced to attack for three. Not bad, you know, to follow up with the raptor. raptor, but but still, this is that was a Desecration Demon as well, but he gets to play Night Vale Spectre to stabilize this board completely. Right. And you can see, why, no he, you can see why he took the uh, Rapid Hybridization here. Yeah. yeah. Because exactly. he's taking nothing this yeah, turn? Yeah, no, it was super smart play on Paul's part. Wow. I mean, he apparently does believe thoughts he belongs in his deck. Uh-huh. I mean, yes. I mean, it... It gives a good player the opportunity to make really smart decisions. I mean, it is a good. It is clearly a very good card. And it is his only. An wow, that was a pack rat as well. <laughs> Interesting. Now, does he attack here though? Because th there is a triple block option here for Sam Pardee. Wow. Where he would lose both of his Night Vale. Uh, excuse me, his uh, yeah. Judges if he triple familiars. blocks and then Cloudfin Raptor gets, he can't triple block there. No triple block. I, I don't okay. even think Paul has the removal spell, but yeah. it's. Oh. That was the island that Sam wants. It and was, and it's going to allow Paul Rietzel to play a Desecration Demon. Oh, another island. Okay. All right, there's an island. So That's good. Long awaited, and it has finally arrived, though is it too late is the real question because a Frostbrand word here on turn five or whatever, mm -hmm. not that great. I mean, th he's drawn all of his sort of limited cards here, right? <laughs> like, he doesn't have the big mythic punch that the deck... Often He's got does a have. In his hand. He has it in his hand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Demon attacks. Sam lets it attack. Yeah. So sure, take six. And a second demon, demon number two. Cool game. Believe another Biden there, and are we going to see a Biden? Yeah. We are. Quick update from the ti side tables. Todd Anderson is one-one with Andrew Hansen. I wonder if we can hold them for game three. <laughs> Love to see game three, Todd Anderson versus Andrew Hansen. All right, Sam Hardy, no attacks after playing the Biden. Ships the turn back. Go to attacks. Sure. So at this point, Paul Rietzel is ignoring any semblance of card advantage or anything. He's just, how much damage can I get through? I mean, this is a lethal attack. Right. So he's going to force Sam Party to do something here. Right. And Sam's better off chump blocking rather than sacking and giving the demon a counter. Right. And he so does that. So goes to that. six. Gray Merchant for Gray the win! Gray Merchant, and that's it! Paul Rietzel Paul has Rietzel. evened wow. things up. Unbelievable. Wow. Moles to five. Wow. Cal look how calm he is. He's <laughs> just like, yeah, yeah, this is how we do it. <laughs> wow. Mulligans to five has a rough thought sees where he's really got to make his plan. Says, my plan is to play this Night Vale Spectre by drawing some lands mm -hmm. and letting that shore up the board, which is exactly what happened. He protects it by taking rabbit hybridization, and he rides that and a pair of demons to the end, finishing off. Wow. Wow, that is insane. Uh, that Paul Rietzel. Awesome. Gold Pro for the United States. He's currently ranked 20th on our top 25 pro rankings. But if you're a Paul Rietzel fan, check the rankings in a few days, and you'll <laughs> see that he has gone up a bit from there. To Wednesday night when that gets updated? Uh, I'm not Wednesday sure. Wednesday night. Wow. Boy, taking that rapid hybridization, that was a tricky decision, and he made it spot on. I was listening. He was telling a story earlier about uh, thought seizing an opponent who ha thought seizing against uh, an Esper control deck, and he his Esper control opponent. He thought seized. 
Azorius charm over Divination, mm -hmm. which is kind of an unusual choice, but he wanted his opponent to play Divination on turn three, so Paul would have a window to play Erebos. Yes. I mean, those are the wow. kind of decisions you get with a Thought Seize, right? If you understand the matchup well enough, you can sort of figure out, all right, I want you to do this on turn three so that I can do this other thing on turn four. It's just it's fun watching players who like, just see all those lines. That is insane. So I'm getting a few updates from BDM. He's out there scouting for us. And uh, okay. Owen Turtenwald, Joseph Nix, yeah. they're going to three. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So Owen is, is trying to keep his uh, his streak alive here and trying to string two Grand Prix victories together. After having gone 13 <laughs> top eights without one, he'd like to just pick up two in a row. And <laughs> he's going to take a third game before he has uh, before that's going to happen for him, though. Okay. Nix so is probably playing for Valencia, right? I don't, know, I don't know him very well. I don't either. I haven't seen him you know, out of the top tables here at the GP, so I'm assuming he is. He's probably playing for a Valencia spot. Some big matches. Huge matches. I just, it is funny. <laughs> we we <laughs> bring you back. From Paul. We get Randy I Bueller love, I love the here. flash, and too. The, the what? I mean, Paul, just looking at him yeah. smile. Yeah. And, like, the oh, end of the game, as soon as, as soon as Sam makes the, the obvious block of block one, Paul just, like, reveals the hand that yes. has a swamp and a great merchant in it. Yeah. Just so, so this so is lethal, sir. Sorry, you were saying? Oh, I was just saying it's incredible we bring you back, Randy, into the booth. Been a great been a great weekend with you in here, and of course you just get flooded with amazing storylines. <laughs> it must be nice to be Randy Bueller. <laughs> I think it's magic is just awesome. How yeah, humble. This is good times. Me. Yeah, this is fun. Now who do so game three, mm -hmm. Sam does get to play first. Yes. That is, is that is big. relevant. It's very big. I mean, like we said earlier, he's expecting Paul to kill a bunch of his creatures. He just wants to stay, like, you know, one creature ahead for as long as he can. Chip in damage here and there. Vasa every once in a while. Occasional Mutal Vault. Mm -hmm. So that works out better if you're on the play. Right. Brew to start on seven, if possible. But you do whatever you got to do to my deck. I mean... <laughs> it's hard to pick Paul against Paul. Paul just said, I prefer to start at seven if possible, <laughs> but you do what you got to do to my deck. <laughs> That's what he said. It's funny. Yeah, Paul, yeah. Paul's had some, some mulligans here, no doubt about it, yeah. but he's also uh, one of the most disciplined mulliganers uh, around. Uh, I've watched him mulligan hands that I don't think very many people would. That was not an easy game hands. to win, too. No, that was a really like, tough game. He keeps five. He thought he's the rapid hybridization because, mm -hmm. like, the you only way he can win is to top deck land into Nightfell Spectre. Mm -hmm. He also, remember the Nightfell Spectre attack, right? Yes. If Sam just triple blocks, yep. Paul's got nothing. That's right. I, I, I Like, Paul didn't have a removal spell. He did not. If Sam triple blocks, Paul just shrugs his shoulders and puts Nightfell Spectre That's in the right. graveyard. It was just so risky from Sam's side of the I floor. I would not have triple blocked yeah. out of Sam either, but... Yeah. Like, to see the attack, right, from Paul's seat, you know your opponent can just destroy you by merely blocking. Right. And But you know that your opponent knows that you wouldn't do it if you were going to get destroyed. Yes. And you have a deck full of removal. Just but such but a that's attack. a beautiful thing, right? And, it's and it's oh, taking on way, extra risk when yeah. you need to. Yeah, and don't forget, that's how he found land number four. Yeah. That's how Demon hit play that turn. That's right. Wow. I mean, Sam would have been, in retrospect, would have been better off just chump blocking. Chump blocking one, yeah. Instead of giving him a draw at a land. But, I mean, he doesn't know there's land on top of his library, obviously. Of course. Do we have keeps? It looks like Paul's thinking. Okay. I mean, Sam with his hand face down. I, I think has Paul has a one, two, three, four, maybe a five swamp hand here. Mm. Yeah, I think he, you know, it's actually, you and I were talking earlier, Randy, about a hand, you were comparing a hand to a one lander that Paul kept uh, mm -hmm. against Sperling. This was a lot like the counter example that you used, yeah, which was Paul land, 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 land. You know, five land, a Nightfall Spectre, and a Grey Merchant. Yeah, that that's, it was good. like that, yeah. It doesn't do anything for a while, and then even it's only two spells, you can get flooded. Sorry, we need to be quieter. Is that yeah, what's going yeah, on? that's what's going on. Great. Yeah, apparently Paul can hear us. So, can we tell him to stop listening, or is it's that exciting. not how that works? I don't want to whisper. I'm excited. I don't know if I don't think I finished. Too much fun. I just remember seeing you like playing. We can get excited once it's done. All right. Yeah, we can yell. Once it's done, though, we get to start playing. Oh, that was the worst <laughs> no, I mean uh, once the once the match ends. All right. Yeah, <laughs> we still have two more, and then we're no, gonna play. Fair enough. I need you to teach me vintage still. You know. That's been fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I like the, the big crowds. It, it seems like it might become yeah. a, a thing. <laughs> I hope it does. I just love watching thing. it. Yeah. There's a lot more decisions there than people think there are. Mm -hmm. It's definitely an interesting format. 
All right, Paul taking his third mulligan of the match? I believe. The game he lost, he didn't take any mulligans. No, it didn't bother him last time either. Right. When he the game he two. won was the double mulligan. Right. How about D6? All right. Acceptable. He says acceptable, and we're off to the races here. So, Cloudfront Raptor for Sam Pardee. Uh, Farika's cure off the top Thoughts for Paul Rietzel, but he gets to see what's mm -hmm. coming anyway. Three land, judges familiar. Is that Thassa and is that a Night Veil Spectre? What's the middle card? Uh, that is a Night Veil Spectre in the middle, yes. It's not judges familiar. It's either Thassa or Night Veil Spectre. And I think it depends whether you have a removal spell that can kill a Night Veil Spectre. Mm -hmm. But if he can kill Night Veil Spectre, he takes the Thassa. Otherwise, if he can't kill Spectre, then I think he has to take it and hope he can... I mean, how how big a how big of a problem is Thassa long game for Paul Rietzel? Uh, he he's hope I mean he, he's much happier in the world where he has the removal spell for the Spectre so that Thassa can go away now. Okay. I mean, he can maybe keep Thassa dormant, but that Scry ability will beat him eventually. It adds like, up. It, it definitely adds up. It's not as good as an Underworld connections mm -hmm. on Paul's side, so mm -hmm. like he can kind of outrace it. Like drawing cards is better than scrying them, but he doesn't. He would prefer to be able to take Thassa here. What does Paul's hand have, though? I see Grey Merchant, Nykthos. Are those pack rats on the top of his hand? It, they are, and he's also got a swamp. Yeah, so he does not have the removal spell for Spectre, which right. makes this a tricky decision. He's Paul. also... Is that, that, that hand, is that a pack rat hand? Is that how this game's going to play out? Turn two pack rat. And just go. And then just, you know, third land go. Yeah, that could absolutely be it. That may be how this hand plays out. There's no Master of Waves on the other side. God, if he's on the pack rat plan, which does that yeah. make better? You still went out. Yeah, I know. I was like, <laughs> okay. I mean, I was going to like pack rat against Thassa or Night Vale Spectre. All right, well. So he took the Night Vale Spectre. Took the Spectre. Okay. So Sam Pardee. Judge is familiar Judge Revolved familiar. Raptor. Yeah, attack for one. Play land. Another, another one drop. Says go. All right. So there's another Ooh. Thought Seize, though. A very timely one. I think that. Uh, I mean, if he doesn't yeah, get the pack right here, but yeah, you totally take Thassa not, now. And he's Sam left is Sam just with out of gas. Two islands. Two one drops and four islands. Paul can live with this. That is another one drop. Another judge is familiar for Sam Pardee. So he's going to be able to keep, keep committing. Maybe it wasn't. Holding it back? It might have been a, a rapid hybridization in that case because sure. you play it right. I mean. Interesting. So Paul can play a pack rat here. Yes, he can also make sure to resolve a Farika's uh, cure if he wants, which looks like what his plan is. Yeah. This is your upkeep. Yeah, it goes to upkeep. So that if Sam's going to do anything as a response, he'll be down that mana for the rest of the turn. And he does. He uses the rapid yeah, hybridization. Upgrades it into a 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, biggest creature in his deck. <laughs> <laughs> and attack you for one. And he just plays a land for the turn and passes it back. Congratulations, Todd Anderson. You are going to Pro Tour Valencia. Mono Black through to the semis there. Naya down for the count. So it's very black and blue tournament. Hope you like black and blue because for the rest of the tournament, we're going to be watching some combination of those two. All right, so Paul Rietzel tanked here. He's got a Nykthos, and there it is, Pack yeah. Rat. He's got Pack Rat. I think he's got uh, Devour Flesh up too. Ooh, Biden of Thassa, attack with both. But uh, Paul says, ease up there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. Because this is a big one. Okay. Pack Rat's not big enough to block. And Four of course, blockers. the other creature has Flyer before Blockers. Right. Devour, Devour Flush you. So Sam has the choice, basically, <laughs> of sacking to counter it and or gaining choosing no the life. familiar and yeah. gaining life. <laughs> Pretty sure the judge's familiar is going down here. I mean, there's a chance he wants the flyer because of the Biden. It could be. Like if he sacks the 3-3. Three, three, I mean, the pack rat is going to start blocking the 3-3 three, three very soon. Pretty soon. It's kind of an interesting decision. Yeah, it is. There's definitely value in having a flyer. Sacrifice this one, so I gain one. But there's also value in dealing damage. Paul's yeah. at 12, now Could 9. Yeah, Paul's going to drop to 9 here. There's two thought seasons. The life is relevant. You can go. Another island. Okay. All right. Paul untaps. He needs a Mutavault is what he needs. Ah, we have another mono black player through to the semifinals. Congratulations, Owen Turtonwald. You're still alive to win back-to-back -back GPs. <laughs> this is turning out quite yeah. interestingly here. All right, so Packrat <coughs> is active, ready Playing to defense. go, and he says go. 
you got to figure he's got to take one more hit here. You you can't start chumping with pack right because no. you never get ahead, right? right. Yeah, it seems like you take a hit to six. I don't know what. <laughs> it's going to get a little awkward here, though, because remember, Biden of Thassa also has another ability. True. <laughs> and Sam Pardee is sitting at 21 life, so he can start activating that Tha that Biden. Well, but Paul can always make a pack rat token after the activation. Yes. Like, he can make a new blocker after. He can. He can make a new blocker on Sam's turn once he gets the pack rats right. up and running. Okay. Yeah, it, it seems like you got to take three to six. Giving him a card is sad, master especially of when waves. a card is a master of waves. Right. One, two, three. And there's three tokens. Make Paul's a pack. discarding yeah. one of his two cards. It's a pack rat. Sure. So now he's got a pair of two twos. So that was an instant speed pack rat that costs three. I think he's got Gray Merchant. So I think I think he's got Swamp Gray Merchant. Neither of which neither of which kills a master of waves. It does not. One, two, three, four, though, is going to put Paul back up to 10. Yeah. And yeah, he needs a blocker. Yeah, and take a little little chunk out of Sam Pardee's life total, drop, dropping him down to 17 here. Or is it? He's going to actually rapid hybridization with the hmm. trigger on the stack, and that's going to so mean Paul only gains two? Yeah, he only goes up to eight here. Two. Now he's got a 3-3 three, three instead of a 2-4. Right. And the pack rats are two twos. This attack's not going to go well for Paul, is no, it? No, it is not at all. And there's oh, Tidebinder, Tidebinder Mage, Mage on your green creature. Wow. And he went very quickly to attacks and... Not attacking with the Master. This gets through for four. Adding the Master would only make it six, so... He's going to attack for two, four, six, eight, and force Paul Riesel yeah, to chunk block with one Paul, pack rat. three, four, five, at six, least. seven. Well, he can trade one pack rat for a wave token and right. take seven. Or he can trade both of them for two waves. That seems worse somehow. None of this seems good. No. He can double block the 3-3. Three, three mm -hmm. And Take then two, planning, four, to planning to top deck a removal spell for Master Waves, but that, just, that dies to Tidebinder Mage. Wow. This is not a great... And remember, anything that gets through for Sam Party is going to draw him cards, too, to keep the <laughs> pressure flowing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that... Yeah, this is yeah, bad. I was trying to figure out how Paul could win this before Sam was drawing three, four cards. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> two, three cards. Okay. Huh. One second, assign two and one. He, he did that. He did what Double you said. Yeah, I, I yeah. can see where he's going with it. It's exactly right. what you said, Randy. Now he can top deck a removal spell for Master, but, but he's still on two against Tidebinder Mage. Refill the grip. Three more cards in hand. And remember, Sam Party, he's got three untapped mana here. He can just recommit to the board now, yeah, and he does... Luck two Cloudfront Raptors and just right, flippantly says, one. go for it. <laughs> and that's it. The party advances to wow. the semifinals here past Paul Rietzel. Congratulations, Sam Pardee. You are going to Valencia and Atlanta. This is a this is a big day for the qualifiers here. Yeah, Pro Tour Valencia got a little tougher today. Mm -hmm. Couple, of, couple new players. So we have one more match outstanding. We have Sam Black versus Valentin Mockel, but into the semis. It looks uh, like they're done. It looks like they're done. It does. Looking at the That's probably at the not good for Sam Black. It does look like they're done because Valentin